And here is the Writer's Almanac for Wednesday, the 1st of January, 2020. It's New Year's Day. The earliest recorded one was about 2000 B.C. in Mesopotamia, where the New Year was celebrated in mid-March, around the time of the vernal equinox. Iranians and Balinese still celebrate the New Year with the spring equinox. The Chinese New Year, based on the lunar cycle, falls somewhere between late January and late February. In Europe, the Celtic New Year began on November the 1st, after the harvest. The first time the day was celebrated on the 1st of January was in 45 B.C., when Julius Caesar redid the Roman calendar, basing it on the sun instead of the moon, adding some days to the year, declaring every January 1st the start of the new one. But he was a little bit off, and so... By the Middle Ages, the calendar was about 10 days ahead of itself and had to be fixed in the 1570s. It was on this day, 1660, Samuel Pepys began keeping a diary, continued for nearly a decade, writing about the plague of 1665 and the great fire of 1666, the coronation of Charles II, also writing about his own diet and his toilet habits and his marriage and his extramarital affairs and social events that he had been to. Finally gave it up when he thought he was losing his eyesight. The hymn Amazing Grace was first sung on this day in 1773 at a prayer meeting in Olney, England, written by John Newton, a sailor and ship's captain who had become the curate in the town. His phrase, that saved a wretch like me, referred to the fact that he'd taken part in the slave trade for many years. The hymn was sung to a variety of tunes. It wasn't until 1835 it was linked to the melody that we know today. And it's the birthday of J.D. Salinger, born in New York City, 1919, Jerome David Salinger, author of The Catcher in the Rye in 1951. It's the birthday of E.M. Forster, London, 1879, raised by his mother and his aunts. He inherited a great deal of money, so when he graduated from Cambridge, he had the freedom to devote his life to writing. 1901, he began a novel that he called Lucy, about a young woman who travels to Italy with her spinsterish older cousin. It eventually became his third published novel, A Room with a View, his first big literary success, Howard's End, in 1910. A Passage to India came out 14 years after that, set during the British colonial period in India, and his novel Morris, Homosexual Love Story wasn't published until after Forster died in 1970. Here's a poem by Barbara Crooker, The New Year. When a door bangs shut, a window doesn't open. Sometimes it slams on your fingers. God often gives us more than we can handle. A sorrow shared is a sorrow multiplied. There's a bottle of champagne waiting to be uncorked, but it's not for you. Nobody wants another poem. The prize-winning envelope has someone else's name on it. This year, you already know you're not going to lose those 10 pounds. How can you feel hope when the weight of last year's rejections is enough to bury you? Still, the empty page craves the pen wants to feel the black ink unscrolling on its skin. In spite of everything, you sit at your desk and begin. The New Year, a poem by Barbara Crooker, from Some Glad Morning, published by University of Pittsburgh Press and used by permission here on The Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and a very happy new year.